Hi, I'm Ben Sauerwein, and this is a talk I'll be giving at the 101st Rutgers Statistical Mechanics Conference. This talk is a little bit more technical than the other talks you've seen on YouTube from me. So, if you're not familiar with riboswitches or my research, you might want to look at the other videos first. In this talk, I concern myself with a class of bound-off riboswitches. These are riboswitches that, in the presence of their ligand and solution, should turn off transcription of the gene. These riboswitches have an anti-terminator structure, as well as their terminator structure that actually causes the gene transcription to get turned off. So, the issue is this. Often, we look at the anti-terminators and say, well, they're less stable than the terminator hairpin. They sh they're unstable to the terminator hairpin's production then, so their lifetime had better be long enough that the RNA polymerase can transcribe past the terminator hairpin and continue producing the gene. Otherwise, the riboswitch simply won't be effective. In order to model the process of going from the anti-terminator to terminator, I decided to try to produce an analytic method. What I did then was propose this model. As the anti-terminator's nucleotides near the base dissociate, they're immediately allowed to bind into the terminator hairpin's conformation. So what you see, step by step, is the anti-terminator dissolving and the terminator beginning to form on the other side. In this way, I, produce, I go from a very complex conformation landscape to a simple, one-dimensional walk of a domain boundary. And this domain boundary, of course, separates the anti-terminator from the terminator domain. In order to study whether or not this model was actually effective, I used a Monte Carlo simulation, uh, a program called Kinfold that I've used many times before, and allowed the anti-terminator and terminator to compete with each other over some period of time, and measured the mean first passage time. I could get the same mean first passage time analytically from a rate matrix in the aforementioned model. So here's a, uh, the solution to the differential equation of uh, the position of the domain wall versus this tridiagonal rate matrix expressing just um, the melting boundaries between the anti-terminator and the terminator. And the mean first passage time should be related to the eigenvalues of this rate matrix. Namely, the smallest non-zero eigenvalue. So, it appeared that for the RNA chains that could actually be uh, said to compete using this model, that this method was quite successful. However, there is a second method of competition between anti-terminator and terminator that I hadn't immediately accounted for that appeared to be present in more uh, riboswitches than the uh, method that I originally thought of. Namely, in the dominant method, what happens is this. The anti-terminator first widens to encompass more of the chain, and then the terminator nucleates within a bulge in this anti-terminator structure. So what you see is then is that the terminator actually grows out of the anti-terminator and consumes it from the inside. This, of course, is a, a method that can be modeled with a bit more of a complex space, which is a project I'm not quite finished with. So that is the story of anti-terminator, terminator, com terminator competition at least as I understand it now, analytically, and I appreciate your time.